Hello everyone, this is Mike from Dimensional Walking. So today I have a question. I will start this video off with a question. And the, the main word of the question is sleep. Why do we sleep? Why do we need to sleep? You know, this, this is a question that's probably never been answered. And uh, many people have pondered it for many, many, many years. And uh, they still do and probably will for the future. Anyways, you know, we spend one third of our life sleeping, about eight hours a day. And for a person that makes it to 75 years, that's like 25 years of your life. You're, you're sleeping. And it's hard to believe, and I, I don't really believe, that many people use that eight hours well. Besides, you know, uh, you know, having to sleep because you're tired or exhausted. But what is the real reason of sleep? Um, you know, many people have said many different things. So I'm going I'm to kind of talk about it from a perspective of contactees and aliens, alien abductees. You know, they've come back with some pretty interesting things and had some interesting experiences with beings in the dream state. So, again, um, let's talk about uh, is our dreams like a uh, time to regenerate our life force and, and our essence? Uh, you know, that is one of the things that uh, some of the abductees and contactees have said. Now, the other thing that may be an interesting sidebar here is, is, it, is insomniacs, are they actually sleeping in the waking state? Uh, you know, that's also, that's also out there as something to ponder, I guess, at this point. Uh, anyways, uh, one of the key uh, successful experiences of the dream world is to be engaged, you know, and be engaged with your dreams. Uh, you know, Carlos Constanada uh, always said one famous thing that you need to try to do when you're in your dream state was to go ahead and be able to turn your hand and see the other side. You know, if, if, you have, if you can do that, and I don't think there's too many people out there that can, if you can do that, you actually have some control of your dream state, which is absolutely incredible. So next time you're in a dream, you should try that. Look at your hand, the palm of your hand, and then turn it over. And if you can see the back side, then you're in control of your dreams, or at least partially in control of your dreams. So the indigenous people of the world, uh, around the world, uh, really feel, uh, much more than white people of the world, feel that dreams are really, really important. And they spent a lot of times trying to understand dreams and try to enhance their uh, understanding of when they're in the dream state how they can control it, you know, what they can derive from it. And, that, and that's a big part of their cultures. And it's pretty consistent around the, uh, around the world. Um, so it's really, really important to them. And I, and I think it should be more important to the white, the white folks of the world also, uh, or the other, the other different folks of the, the world. I don't want to pick on the white folks, but I am a white folk. So there you go. Um, let me see what else we got here. You know, we, we question the need for sleep, and maybe we should be maybe questioning the whole our whole existence, because sleep makes up, like I said, a third of our sleep. Um, you know, we we should find ways in which uh, we can use our sleep, our dream time, to basically enjoy more of our life on the other two thirds of our existence. Um, and, and that's what, that's really what's really important. Um, we, ha we have to engage with our dreams and we have to, you know, and we, we should really look to the Native Americans. You know, they're, they're the ones, Native Americans or all the other indigenous people of the world because they seem to have the upper hand or they, they really have a, a great understanding of the dream state. So it's really, really important. Um, so let me, let me, let me tell you about a, uh, uh, an experience, uh, that I, uh, I gotten from one of my viewers uh, a few years ago. And this viewer, um, uh, 
was uh, had some really interesting experiences. One of them was with a group of entities called the Ponders, uh, uh, and what uh, what they were was they were this this uh, group of uh, humanoid type beings. Now, they, to me, they you know the way the description is, I don't know if they really were humanoids. But they were described as, let me kind of read this description a little bit so I don't miss it. Uh, They were a hybrid bird-human, bipedal, um, having long, thin, metallic, segmented neck, uh, elongated, down, down covered their head with beautiful, elongated, their head was elongated, and their their face was covered with these big, beautiful uh, eyes. you know, and, and I don't want to say it sounds exactly like uh, uh, Big Bird, but it sort of sounds like Big Bird a little bit, uh, which is really strange. Uh, and, and I was just thinking about that uh, when I started putting my notes together. Uh, it's, it sounds like a little bit like Big Bird. So maybe, maybe Jim, Jim Henson, uh, he, uh, uh, you know, had some dreams and maybe he ran across this group. And maybe that's what inspired him to, you know, to make the character Big Bird. Because as you know, is when they're, you know, they're kind of hanging with kids and talking to kids and communicating with kids. It's, it's a pretty calming effect. And saying calming effect, that is one of the, the things uh, that these, these uh, uh, entities uh, seem to have over children. Now, this whole setting, by the way, and I, I kind of didn't tell you what the setting was. This dream setting was actually like these these uh, pronders. They were hanging with wild human children, and I don't know what you mean by I, when I say wild. I don't necessarily. I mean just normal kind of small kids. And you know, when you get a bunch of small kids together in a room, it's it's kind of chaos. But anyways, apparently. And by the way, the, these uh, entities were two to three feet high. So in some cases, they were about the same height as some uh, children that were also in the room. So there seems to be that uh, there, there was this relationship between these kind of strange-looking bird-like entities and the children. And there was no verbal communication. There wasn't even a telepathic communication. What it was, was really they seemed to know. It was a knowing type thing. It was just being in the presence that it seemed to calm the children down. There seemed to be, they seemed to be attentive to these, these aliens. Uh, you, know, it was, uh, you know, like I somewhat say, uh, we can, uh, someday I will do a video on the secret schools where aliens come down and there's children around and they're, they're hanging out and they're kind of, there's a teaching going on, and a lot of times there isn't any verbal communication. It's just the presence, uh, which I always thought was very fascinating. Uh, Whitley Strieber, Strieber uh, talked about, in fact, I think he wrote a whole book on it called Secret Schools, and it was, it was really one of my favorite books from him. And uh, we could uh, probably will do a video on Secret Schools because I've had some of my own personal experiences on them. So uh, anyways... So uh, these these pronderers, uh, they were uh, kind of monk-like, very calm, very peaceful, uh, and and when they uh, again, like I was saying, is when they got close to the children, they just seemed to calm the children down, and in their presence, um, uh, you know, uh, it was all about their presence. There was something going on with their presence, their energy. Their energy was very powerful, but at the same time, not non-lethal in many ways. You know, we always worry about aliens or things like that having some kind of lethal power over humans. These definitely did not have that or didn't. You know, the experiencer who I talked to, who I had interviewed, that's what that particular person said. Um, anyways, I think this... These these pronders, uh, they they are entities that you can meet or you can encounter, and I think there's more. There's probably many more that that you can encounter in in the dream state. And I think really, uh, I I think it's an important thing to do. 
Uh, I think it's important. I think it's, it's rejuvenating uh, to have these encounters. You know, I know there's nightmares. There's all kinds of crazy things. You know, I was just watching, uh, uh, what, what is it, uh, HBO's, uh, not HBO, I'm sorry, Netflix's The Sandman. You know, and that's kind of uh, on the darker side of this whole dream thing. Uh, interesting, very interesting. I, I think if you're interested in, uh, you're interested in dreams, or you're interested in uh, kind of dark entities, and, and maybe even a few good entities, um, you, you need to watch The Sandman. Uh, it's, it's a series, and it's, it's quite good. It's, like I said, there's some pretty dark spots there, so I don't really think, personally, I don't think it's for children. Uh, probably definitely not for children. Um, so anyways, so that was it. Uh, I, I think these these beings, again, and let me just kind of, at the bottom of my notes, I kind of uh, said this, and I want to make sure I get it right. The, these entities allow humans, humanoids, ourselves, to explore the universe in a totally fearless, doubt-free way. Uh, you know, and after talking to that particular person, that experiencer that had this dream, um, I believe that. I, I really do. So anyways, that's it. If you like us, please like us. And if you've had some similar experiences about the dream state, and maybe involving some type of entities, uh, I would love to hear from you. Uh, and you can, you can either comment here on it, or you can go ahead and send us an um, a email at dimensionalwalking at gmail.com. Uh, please subscribe. We need your subscriptions. Um, and that's about it. As Roy Rogers always said, happy trails until we meet again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.